uh, John Pullin. Um, I was a defender. I was at the club 16 years. When did you first realise you could play football? Probably when I was about seven, seven years old. Um, we, uh, we used to take a ball over the park. Um, at that age, <clears throat> at that age my, my father would buy me a, a new football every year for Christmas. And it was always the first thing that I looked for on, uh, on Christmas morning. So, yeah, about seven years old. Did you have any, did you follow any club or have any sort of replica kit as a kid or follow anyone? I never had any replica kit, um, but my father used to take me to what would be a good match. So we would go to Tottenham, Queen's Park Rangers, Brentford, uh, but <clears throat> uh, I soon got a, a liking for Chelsea and, and that stayed with me all my life. And where did you play football as a kid, hone your skills? Uh, I played for the school um, up until... Um, until the, both both junior and, and senior, um, and then I, I played for the county schools, um, and then Billericay. And Billericay has been the only club that I I played for really. And what about when you was a kid? Where did you practice? Um, outside of school. Outside of school, um, I never played for any kind of youth club or or anything like that. So it would literally be. Um, down the side of the house and then at some garages or over, over the, the back of the garden wall where there was a field with, with friends. Um, and that was probably about it. Yeah. So how did you, how did you get to play for Bill Ricky? When I was about 14, <clears throat> a couple of school friends already played for Bill Ricky youth team. And uh, they asked me to, if I'd go along and play, um, and so, so I did, um, and uh, that was about 14 years old, and, and stayed there um, until I was about 16, 17. Yeah, what was the, what was the ground like in those days? Did it, was, you, was you at Archer Hall first? Yes. Yes, we were at Archer Hall, um, and it was a mud heap, basically. The... Uh, Everyone knows where Archer Hall is anyway in Billericay, and they probably realised that it was uh, that it has a slope on it. So one end of the pitch used to used to get very wet, and the other end used to get even wetter. But yes, it was a mud heap. Your yeah, whereabouts were you living whilst you played for Billericay, and, and where did you work? I was initially I was living in Basildon, um, and. I worked at a company called Standard Telephone and, Ca and Cables. Uh, I worked there as a COBOL programmer. And then I moved to IBM. And I was at IBM for, <clears throat> excuse me, for about seven years. Um, and then later on I went to a, a big American investment company called uh, Prudential Beige. Um, had, when did you find time to train and stuff? What was the work and football balance? Um, later on in my career, I, I was um, very, very busy at work. But strangely enough, I always managed to be able to get away on a Tuesday and a Thursday, um, which was training nights. So I, I found it really not a problem at all. Can you remember getting paid or having any privileges? Um, I didn't really get paid an awful lot. Uh, some boot money, um, but it uh, it was the stars of the team that, that uh, got paid, not the defenders. That's not right, is it, Fred? Although you perfectly okay. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> um, so have you, who who were the big rivals you remembered? Um, well, the obvious big rivals were Basildon. Um, he. Uh, Yes, as we as, as we went up through from the Olympian League and into senior football, Basildon came along with us. Um, so they were our rivals for a good number of years. It's most of the guys at Basildon I I knew um, since we were kids. Um, most of them were my age. Most of them were 
uh, school friends as well. So that was even more of a, a rivalry as far as I was concerned. I think later, <clears throat> later on, I think Farnborough became rivals, even though, even though we only ever played them twice while, while we were there anyway. Um, I think it's the fact that it was in the Vars that they kind of came, be, be, you know, became rivals. Okay, so it's a match day. What do you do after you, after you wake up? Match day was really no, no different um, than any other day. Um, I would have breakfast. Uh, if I had things to do, then I would do them. Um, and then we would normally meet before, before the match. Um, if it was an away match, we would meet obviously earlier on. So depending on really uh, what time we were supposed to meet, it, uh, you know, made, made my choice of what I did in the morning. I basically normally try to relax as much as possible. Um, um, nothing special. Okay. Okay. One of the matches I do remember, uh, we, it was a Vars match. We played against Worthing. Um, it was away at Worthing. Um, it was a, a winter's day. Uh, it was very debatable whether we'd even play because it was, uh, the pitch was icy, very icy. There were icy puddles all over the place. I unfortunately had um, uh, tackled somebody and ended up in a puddle and so the, my shirt was soaking wet and it just got colder and colder and colder. Um, at half time uh, I had two people trying to warm me up um, and if I'm honest I really don't remember much of the second half at all. So. Um, whether I would suffer from hypothermia or not, I don't, I'm not sure, but uh, I, I do remember that one. Um, actually, the, the other match I do remember as well is we played a team called Winterton Rangers at home, um, round about the fifth round. And I actually thought that they were, were one of the best teams we ever played in the bars. Uh, I think we beat them 2-1 at home. And I thought we were actually quite lucky to, uh, to to win that match. I think if we hadn't if we hadn't have beaten them, I think they would have gone on on to Wembley and won the Vars that year. There's also another match. Was it at East Bourne? <coughs> there was an absolute goal blame. Was it that one? That was a, another one nil. I think Winters was one nil. Was it one nil? I think we would have scored the winning goal. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I knew there was only one goal in it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the, the one that down at um, Eastbourne was quite an open pitch and the wind was blowing a gale. And I think we kicked with the wind first half and then battled hard in the second half to sort of keep them away. You remember that one if you don't know what I mean? I do remember it because uh, I remember the guy I was marking was, was, was like a, a 10 second 100 metre guy. And he was so, so fast so far but actually the it, what the, the match threads just reminded me of by saying that is um, we played Hendon um, in the FA Cup and I think it was the, the final qualifying round at Hendon um, and we I think we lost it 3-2 and what I remember about that was that um, was that I think we were we were really up against it. I think we were playing uphill in the second half. I think we were already down against the gale force wind, driving rain, um, and we nearly, we nearly got a draw out of that. We nearly got them back home, um, and I think they went on to, to draw Watford. I think in the in the in the in the first round of the FA Cup. And I do remember that. Yeah, I think I was at that one. I seem to remember that. Do you remember that one, Fred? I remember yeah. that one. I remember missing a, a goal at a very acute angle that would have made it three each. Oh, Fred? Yeah. I do remember my missus as well. She's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, did you, did you ever get many injuries or niggling health problems? 
Um, I probably only ever got one one bad injury, which was uh, I tore my cartilage uh, in 1976, which uh, w which was probably it was probably about round four of the vase. I didn't didn't do it in a, in a match. I did actually did it in training, so that put me out for about six weeks. Um, that was probably the only bad injury I ever had. What stick did you get from the players in particular? Did you? I know they thought you were really fast. I think Jeff was saying you you really speedy. But did you have a nickname or? Um, well, I guess my nickname was JP. Uh, I think. I have no idea who who gave me that or how it came about. Um, but other than that, I don't remember. I don't remember getting too much stick. Uh, but I probably did. What were the? Was there any influential players or ones you just thought they were just so great, like like uh, role models and what have you? Certainly, um, when I first started playing for the first team, uh, I, I was very, I was very young. So there were players there that were very experienced. They were mature men. They'd been a, around in amateur football a long time. Um, people like Arthur, who, who was the captain. And I looked up to them all. Can you say, can you say any words about Steve, Steve Payne? I think Steve was probably uh, one of the nicest people um, and one of the best players that I've ever played with. Very, uh, I think, very underrated sometimes, um, but he would give you a, more than a hundred percent. He was a, he was somebody that you did look up to and respected as a player. Um, he was, he was, he was probably the, if you like, the the pillar. Of, uh, of certainly the of certainly the defence, uh, and and probably the team too. It, Steve was the player that everybody looked up to and respected. Yeah, I've heard that. It's true, isn't it, Fred? Mm. It's amazing. Oh yeah. He's yeah. very much attacking. When I was watching the Vars footage, didn't realise how much he went forward with his head. And yeah, he was. He, he must was, have come a lot ground. Was, he was our king. Mm. Yeah, right. The final day. Can you remember what you did from? Waking up, did you have a good night's sleep and where were you, etc. This is 76. The night before the match, we stayed at um, the motel um, that's on the way to the Orsett Cock. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but we stayed there overnight. Motel House. Um, yeah, the Moat House Motel. We stayed there overnight. Uh, in the morning, we we had breakfast. I think we had a a brief meeting just to start preparations for the for the match, uh, and then we were in the coach and, and on our way to Wembley. You get close to Wembley, and I suppose you start to see people milling about. What was that like pulling up in the car park? And... That was when you suddenly realised that that we were there. I think when the the, the time I realised was when we, we, we pulled along Wembley Way and if you looked down the, down the coach you could see the Twin Towers in front of you with the flags flying. Um, then you knew, you knew you were there then. That was, uh, that, that was actually a great feeling. Um, and then from the dressing rooms, coming through the tunnel, can you describe that? Pretty much the same as going down Wembley Way, um, as you, if I remember rightly, the the uh, the, the tunnel um, sloped, so when you were at the bottom, you couldn't really see anything other than the sky and the top of the stand. And as you as you came up the the tunnel, then more and more came into into view, and then all of a sudden you were, you were out in in the sunshine, um, you know, with the pitch right in front of you. And at that stage, that, that looks one of the most wonderful things that you're ever going to see in football. Have you got any memories of 1976, first of all, of 
the match, how it went? Um, I think there's probably probably two two memories that um, that, that stand out. Uh, the first one was was myself, um, the guy I had to mark, I think whose name was some was some DK, but he, he was there basically their, their danger man or, or winner, um, and I overlapped. I can't remember who passed me the ball, but I cut inside him and, and hit a left foot shot, which is unusual for me, uh, and it just cleared the bar. I actually thought it was I actually thought it was going in. But it, uh, it cleared the bar. So that's the first memory. The second memory is Jeff's goal. How, how was that? Um, the I just remember that I think it was Gary Smith got the ball on the right hand side, um, passed it across. Um, it looked as though the centre half was going to cut it out. Jeff intercepted it, um, and during that that interception pushed it past the. The, uh, the centre half, uh, and then he just placed it wide of the goalkeeper. And I think we all went mad. <laughs> um, what about 1977, the draw? Do you remember? Well, strangely enough, I, I, I really don't remember too much about that match. Um, certainly not the match at Wembley. Um, probably, I, I, I cannot remember their goal. I can't, I can't even remember our goal come to that. I think, Fred, you got it, didn't you? Did you get the yeah. against uh, Sheffield? But I don't remember. It was a header. Yeah. Not doing too bad for something I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I can't picture it at all. Um, I can only remember Arthur's own goal, unfortunately for Arthur. Um, really don't remember much of that, that final at all. Wipe it out of your memory, yeah. I remember more about the, the replay at Nottingham. Yeah, run through that. Um, well, I thought, I thought we actually beat them 2-1. I thought we were far better than that. Uh, I, in fact, I don't think we were ever in trouble about, against them. Um, I remember, again, uh, overlapping down the left-hand side and, and being taken out. Uh, and I think Scotty gave me the ball back. I took the next person on and got taken out again. And I think that then led to a corner. And then from that corner, um, I think was when Jeff scored his goal that he described to you the other day. Um, and then <clears throat> I think from, an, from another corner, uh, Billy Woodhouse scored the second goal. And I thought we were very comfortable from then on. Um, but then we gave away a goal with a f probably about 10 minutes left, I think. Which made the, the last ten minutes a bit uh, a bit edgy, but I thought we were quite comfortable in that. And how did the, did the celebrations differ for that one? Was it a bit? Did, was there steps to walk up and stuff on that one? At, uh, not in Forest. Don't remember. Don't remember that. No, I don't remember that you at all. I think there was. I think there was. There's been some. That was when Brian Clough was. The manager, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. For us at that time. So, okay, um, what about 79? Um, 79 again, I thought we played exceptionally well that day. Uh, I don't think there was a single, uh, uh, there was nobody in our side that didn't have a good game. Um, obviously, everybody remembers it with uh, Dougie's hat trick. Um, the, the biggest memory for me was, was Fred's goal. Just simply because we'd worked on that free kick so many times um, and we had it, we had it uh, so that we could execute it absolutely perfectly. And uh, on the day we did, it was perfect. It, it just could not have gone any better. Can you remember who the players were that was involved? On our side or theirs? On on your side for that free kick, who did we? Well, the free kick was won by Billy Bingham, um, with a tremendous run, um, which the the defender eventually brought him down just at the edge of the edge of the area, probably probably about twenty yards, fifteen about fifteen twenty about fifteen twenty foot outside the penalty area. Um, <clears throat> we lined up. 
three or four people on the far edge of the penalty area. Dougie Young standing roughly about the penalty spot and Scotty over the ball. And uh, the free kick, the way it worked, was that Dougie Young would would take his defender away from the penalty spot. Stevie Bone would make a run towards the penalty spot as Stevie got back to him. Freddie then made the same run, but um, Stevie would block off his defender, leaving Fred with an absolute open goal, um, with an easy, easy open goal that even I would have scored. <laughs> Okay. Any, so the, the any of the presentations you want to run through your memorable one? You mean the the, the Wembley? The yeah, Wembley, the Wembley. Wembley probably ones. probably that last one we just seen the footage from. If you if you can say something about what we see on that footage, Matt, perhaps. Um. Well, strangely enough, I I actually felt that uh, that I. I wasn't in any of the photos or footage or anything else, but I've seen from the footage that I actually was. And I don't actually remember getting hold of the, the cup either. Um, but in fact, I did. Um, so I was actually quite quite pleased to see that. Um, I just really remember, I just really remember that there seemed to be um, a lot more at the third Wembley than there was in, in the other two and I know that you know I know the attendance figures show that there was but it just seemed more I think there was much more um, much more atmosphere much more noise um, and it, it was a joy absolute joy okay um, what was the what was the party like after did you have some champagne stuff and where, where did it happen and where did you go we certainly had some champagne, that's for sure, and we certainly parted afterwards. Um, I have no idea where we went. That good, was it? <laughs> yeah. Um, open bus, top, uh, open top bus rides, run me for him. Uh, well, that was just fantastic. I think, um, I think it beca it was a, I think it was a surprise to all of us just how many people turned up on that, that Sunday morning um, to, uh, you know, to cheer, uh, to cheer the team. Uh, I, I can remember being on top of the bus, uh, looking back, and there were crowds as far as you could see, all, all down, all down the, the, you know, the, all down the high street, and the other way up to, you know, to where the police station was, is, um, and I, I thought that was fantastic. What, what a turnout from you know from the town. It was absolutely fantastic. Any souvenirs from the day? Um, I'm not one for souvenirs. Um, uh, I don't keep cuttings or or anything like that. Um, I've got the three the three Wembley medals um, in a in a frame. Um, I've still got the shirt from from the final. And I think I've got the three programs, but that's about it. I'm not one for souvenirs. That's a pretty good spread, though, isn't it? Hey, <laughs> yeah, tell so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. What do you think of the Birriki Town fans? And is there any particular interaction or people that stand out for you? Um. I think I, I I think the fans that were around at that time um, were another dimension to the to the team. Um, the fans were as important as as the team was. Um, a lot of them became became personal friends. Um, some of them we still see even now um, after all this time, and. I think at the time there were there was a lot of social interaction between the team uh, and the fans, and it's that's something that you don't really see too much at other other football clubs. Um, certainly not these days, and probably certainly not then either. Uh, and I think that was one of the big advantages that we had over over other clubs that you could almost you could almost consider the the fans were worth 
were worth a goal to us now and again when you know when things maybe not going our way the fans would try and lift us what's your most prized memory from all your time at Bariki what would you think you would take with you forever well without without a doubt were, was the Vars finals um, and probably of the Vars finals was the last one um, yeah um, but certainly also the 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 second year we won the Vars um, and we had an extraordinary extraordinary few days where we, we played at Wembley on the Saturday we played at, at um, Crystal Palace Crystal Palace uh, on the following day where we won the the floodlights and then three days later we we then played the the uh, replay final at Nottingham and won that and I think those three days were a massive massive achievement um, for a club like Billericay massive yeah you're right so in a hundred years from now how do you want to be remembered Hundred years from now, if I was if I was remembered as a as a nice person, a fairly decent player, I'd be happy with that. What kind of player was Fred? Fred, um, well, Fred was a was a goal scorer. He's he hold, <coughs> holds the the record for the number of goals scored at, at Billericay. But Fred was more than that was more than just an out and out goal scorer. Fred would drop back into midfield. He was a playmaker. Um, occasionally he would do some work as well. Um, some defending, not very often. But then you wouldn't want him to do that. Fred was, uh, I, I, I used to look up to Fred. Fred was a, was a very, very good player. And a, and a major asset to, to Billericay. And what about Dougie? I think Arsene Wenger, once said that what Arsenal needed was a fox in the box. And I think that's what Youngie was to, to Billericay. Um, Doug scored most of his goals inside the box. Um, and some of them were were typical goals that you would expect a striker uh, to get. He, was, uh, he, he would be in the right place at the right time. Uh, but Doug used to do his share, fair share of work as well. Um, so he certainly he certainly wasn't lazy on the pitch, um, but a, an extraordinary player, Doug. Jeff. Jeff was a typical old-fashioned centre forward. If you played a ball up to Jeff, you would know that it would stick. He would control the ball and look to to bring other players in. Um, he was possibly not the most mobile of, of players, but he didn't need to be because that wasn't his job. He was good in the air. He had two good feet. He had a good shot uh, on him. Um, and you could, you could rely, that, rely on Jeff that uh, he could take care of himself as well. Um, and again, when, when, when you're under the cosh, you need somebody like that as, a, as your out ball if you need to do that. Um, and Jeff could do that. What about Arthur? Arthur was the captain. Um, he was the, if you like, the elder statesman of the of the team. Arthur helped me a lot when when I was first at Billericay as a as a young lad. Um, he would occasionally talk to me after after training and things like that. And as I as I got older, um, I I would not say I tried to model myself on Arthur, but Certainly, playing with him with for all those years, something rubs off. You watch, you watch somebody cool under pressure, somebody trying to play the ball out constructively uh, whenever they can, but really not taking any chances if they if they don't need to. Um, Arthur was a, a steadying influence in the team, uh, and he was the captain. What about you, yeah, John? John Newman. I think. I think you could almost say well, John was John was a superb manager. I think you could almost say that John was ahead of his time. 
I don't think anybody at that time, certainly at non-league football, played the way we did. Um, certainly no teams that we ever played did man-for-man defence. Certainly no teams played a, a holding midfield player. Certainly no teams allowed centre-halves to go dashing down the wing, attacking down the wing. Um, and that's, that's the way John got us to play. Um, and I think at that time, I think he was ahead of his time. Uh, and it was, a, it was a method that suited us. Uh, the players that we had were, the, all, the, all defenders were capable of doing that. Uh, the midfield that we had available to us were capable of, of defending if they needed to. So for us, it worked. And that was because of John.